Alright, so um crazy. I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce the podcast and then we'll just start. Uh you know how I rolled in it, I haven't got any questions prepared. I'm just gonna ask you shit that um would be interesting for you to tell people. Okay. So if you got questions for me, feel free. Okay. Uh, there's no there's no format here in it, we just roll. Of course. I put the music on too, you can't really hear oh. I'm just like showing off the, the setup in it. What's the music? music? What's the music? I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that's... something like uh, a dance tune. Oh yeah, or I'm listening to <laughs> Can we move it a little bit more that way? Yeah, that's perfect. This, this, oh, we're already recording, shit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. I didn't realise he'd already pressed to record. Alright, cool. Alright, that's good. What's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of What I Learned This Week. What's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of What I Learned This What's Week. What's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of What I Learned This Week. I wouldn't take tax advice from a seven-year-old. I wouldn't. I'd, I would take tax advice from someone who's experienced in the field, but not from a seven-year-old, because a seven-year-old hasn't, hasn't got the experience necessary for me to want to take it seriously. It's kind of the same thing with thoughts. I can see thoughts going through my head and I can I can ask myself, do I want to take that on? It's a choice. Regardless of how it feels, it doesn't feel nice to be anxious. I know I've been there for years. The only reason I don't have it anymore and it doesn't stop me from doing stuff is because I can see that it doesn't have that power. I don't know. To me, it's normal, right? To me, it's normal. I think, why Why would you try and recreate? Like, the wheel is circle for a reason. <laughs> look, look, we got a prop here, yeah? So the wheel- Hold it, I'm so everyone can see. All right, so this is, where am I? So this is a this is a wheel. It has been designed circular. Do you know why? Because it's efficient and it rolls <laughs> like this. Everyone's coming in and they're trying to make the wheel rectangular and it's mm. inefficient. It doesn't roll, right? So what I'm saying is, if legends have made a template for us that works why do we always need something sexier for the gram or do you know what i mean like something unique tell, Ooh, them. tell, tell them. them tell them i keep saying to people so i've got a girl recently i'm not gonna name her right she's she came to me uh where she came to me hot from just from, from being hospitalized for an eating disorder she oh was hella God. skinny uh really not in a bad like in a bad way mentally right had never trained before has got uh like children and basically was just like listen i need to take my health seriously i just want to feel healthy i want to feel strong again my joints are hurting whatever two years down the line she is literally oh uh, mate she is like just an example she is squatting 170 kg olympic depth with no spot like in two years naturally for everyone like, who doesn't know and if that doesn't mean something to someone it, it 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 baffles my mind and i go back to like when she started with me in november like two years ago and i look at her and i'm like she was learning how to squat the bar with perfect form mm. and now all she's done is continuously rolled this wheel efficiently <laughs> literally the same exercise so she's she squatted since she's met me day one until now her leg day has been squat first exercise so people say that's boring but look, the wheel, the wheel carried on rolling. Mm. We didn't divert and start doing all of these Instagram burn workouts, doing Stairmaster, like Instagram, like all these bad nonsense. She just continuously got better at squats. She came to me, couldn't even squat the bar. Learned the technique. Two years down the line, naturally, she's now squatting more than most men, double her body weight, and she's on a competitive level where I think she could, if there was like an Olympic sport in just squatting, I would put her in for it. Do you know what I mean? I don't control what I think about or what I feel. And if I could, I'd just feel amazing all the time and I'd think incredible thoughts all the time. I'd have a really high opinion of myself all the time. I'd never judge myself. It would be incredible. But that's not how it works. Unless that's how it works for you. And, and if it is, you know, I'd love to talk to you and, and learn about how that works. But generally from what I can see and personal experience and coaching hundreds of people, um, it don't work like that. So what I would like to do is not live in resistance to what is. If I'm living in resistance to feeling bad or thinking bad thoughts, bad being stuff that doesn't make me feel very nice, I'm living in resistance to that. When I ask the question, what can I do about this? You don't need to do anything. What, there's nothing to be done. It's just, but whatever you sometimes chase or you want it that badly, you repel it anyway. <laughs> Say it one more time, please, man. You're dropping some fucking heat. <laughs> dropping that heat. <laughs> Fuck. 
So whatever you chase and you want so badly, you repel it. Mm. It's almost like it's just energy. We're all energy. And I'm telling you one thing, it repels. Without the ability to feel, the body is just a ticking clock. Like the whole point of our lives is to feel, to have experiences. And I love that because a lot of people are closing themselves off to ever feeling hurt again. And as a result, their lives are empty and boring. They're basically just ticking clocks and they're looking for stuff like sex, drugs like alcohol, food, people to distract them from how they feel. But it doesn't work like that. If you're trying to resist feeling the lowest lows, you're blocking out feeling the highest of highs that you could possibly feel. Engulfed in its own light, it's starting to realize that we are a flame in a dark room. And if we just turn to that and see that, we start to experience the, it's almost like the magnificence of what spirituality is. We start to experience complete creative, like creativeness or the truth behind it when we slow down and really look in the direction of, we're not our thought, we're not, you know, um, just this physical body. There's something beyond that. An entire industry, personal development, self-help industry, based on here's what you can do. Affirmations, courses, um, NLP, a bunch of random, uh, loads of random things that you can do about how you think and feel. What can I do about it? There is nothing to do. Now, here's where people get confused. I'm not saying you turn yourself into a suppressed, unthinking and unfeeling robot. That's what a lot of medication does to people. That's not what we're getting at. What we're getting at is seeing that you exist separate to thought. We're in a Western society where the diet advice is terrible. The supermarket food we eat is terrible. Takeaways are bombarding us with emails telling us buy one, get one free. We've got apps popping up every day saying buy one, get one. It's very easy to eat in a calorie surplus. Terrible, mm. terrible food that's low in protein, high in saturated fats and high in excess oils and, and carbs, right? So if fat loss is your goal, I'm gonna say this now, this is very controversial. You do not need to hire a PT. What you need to do is download my fitness pal, which is free and understand nutrition. Start increasing your calories expenditure by going for walks, going for bike rides and handling your nutrition. You do not need a PT. So the difference between people who have anxiety and people who experience anxious thinking is people who have anxiety hold on to it the anxious thinking that comes through and they're looking for something to do about it. I don't want to feel this way. What can I do about it? I don't want to have these thoughts in my head. What can I do about it? And if you keep doing that, you're paying more and more and more attention to thoughts that are going through your head and you're looking for something to do with them because they look convincing. The difference in someone who doesn't have anxiety anymore and someone who does is the person who has put the anxiety behind them has seen that all they need to do is change the relationship they have with thinking. Had a baby by 30, like I done it. But the problem is, what you've got to be careful with that is, anyone could be standing in front of you and you can make that person the perfect person. Oh my God, just say, sorry, say it one more time, please. So what you've got to be extremely careful about living these scripts where you go, I'm going to be married by 30, I'm going to have a baby by 30, is anybody could be standing in front of you and you'll make that person into the perfect person. You can create a fantasy around anyone and anything you want to. So that's where you have to be balanced, okay? You know, I have to get out of my own way as well because I might have an idea of a plan or a vision, but I have to ensure that I'm doing it with the right energy and co-creating the way I'm meant to co-create because if something's not for me, I'm not going to chase what's not for me. And if you're not in that state, you'll chase what's not for you and then get diverted back on track again. Mm. All of this who you think you are is, is all made up. It's all the, the sounds of the river. The way we relate to that river has changed, right? So when we were kids, the rivers are, yeah, yeah, it's got thoughts. All right, fuck it. I'm, I'm feeling the thoughts. I'm doing stuff. I don't need confidence. I'm happy, whatever. I'm not happy one moment. I'm sad the next. Okay, I'm happy again. It was a flow. And then over time, we started taking thought a bit too seriously. We started cr to create ideas about ourselves and what it means and put meanings on feelings and meanings on events. We started trying to avoid feelings. Oh, I, do, I don't want these things to happen because then I'd feel like this. An emotion is nothing to avoid. Just like... 
A battery is not something to avoid. A piece of lettuce, uh, your liver. These aren't things that I need to avoid. And like my liver, my thoughts and feelings live in me. They ain't going anywhere. I don't need to do anything about them. You know, I always led with, I don't like confrontation. I'm not a confrontational person. And it led me to being a lot more pleasing and a bit of a people pleaser, which wasn't serving me. And it wasn't serving clients I had, and it wasn't serving my relationships. But it was a choice I was making in every moment to be that, to be a people pleaser, not because, and it was because the thoughts I was having around it was like, the reason I'm doing this is because I don't like confrontation. And therefore that's the label and the, like how I show up in the world. This is who it means to be me. But when I decided to look at that, to really look at that, it was like, well, I want to show up in the world and be, you know, uh, in service of my clients, in service of the people around me. That's how I want to be. Um, and that's ultimately what I am, is just this, you know, if I'm looking towards spirituality, let me see how I can show up like that. And I stopped doing the people pleasing thing. So it doesn't become this sense of like, my identity is fixed and I have to be X, Y, and Z. I can choose that, mm. but I can also look in another direction and see that if I can change that by just expressing a different behavior and doing something different, it might feel uncomfortable to do it. And it has felt uncomfortable and I've had resistance to it as well, but I can choose to be different. So it means this whole thing around identity is not fixed. It's not this like static thing that we are this, 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 and this. It's, it's changeable, it's movable. And so for me, it kind of breaks apart that concept of me having an identity as such and more looking towards like the, the what I am, not who am I and searching outwardly for that. Now, when I was using people, places, things to distract me from my feeling, it wasn't I want to, it was I need to, I have to, I should. That's the opposite direction of what we're looking at. And that's what I want to leave you with. I want to ask you how much of your life is based on obligations and uh, and how much of it is based on commitments. Obligation sounds like I should, I have to, um, I need to. Commitment sounds like I want to, I get to, I'm excited to. If my life is based on obligations, I'm going to have a lot of problems. If my life's based on commitments, I'm going to have an... Um, a better experience of life subjectively speaking because i'm not pressured okay so first of all i'd say not everyone needs to lift weights first of all but every human needs to be active all right so regardless of uh, first of all regardless of how old you are what sex you are what race you are every human should be doing something every day to be active whether it's stepping whether or not it's just going outdoors, whether or not it's something indoors, whether or not it's lifting weights that we're talking about, every human needs activity, right? If you go back to our ancestors, we would not be sitting at desks like this, typing mm. and moving mouses, which is why we've got so many back problems and we can't even squat properly and we've got ankle mobility problems. All this stuff is happening from Western society, becoming more advanced technology-wise and our jobs, like we're sitting at a desk, it's not normal for a human to be sitting here like this. Like it's not normal, that's why we have all these problems, right? So I would say to him, first of all, cast your mind back to when you were a kid what sport did you enjoy every human i guarantee you now has a sport that they enjoy it, regardless of who they are they at one point in life it might be ping pong they might have played it and gone oh, i really like this but they've forgotten about it go and do that sport because that's going to keep you active it's going to increase your cardiovascular health it's going to mentally engage you and you're going to want to do it because you enjoy it right so as i said to people like if people come to me and they want to lift weights like my thing is weight training to change physiques that's what i'm about that's it that's that's my niche that's where i'm at i'm not about this battle rope stuff i'm not about crossfit i'm not a runner i just do what i enjoy i'm about crafting a physique so if you want to look godlike come to me that's what i'm about right so that's my that's my niche he might not want to enjoy weights he might not want to deadlift he might want to leg press but i guarantee if he tries every sport he'll find one he likes it might be swimming it might be riding it might be it might be skipping it might be boxing but until he finds that sport that's going to keep him engaged for the rest of his life, he's always going to have a problem with his physique and how he feels. Into Even if we sorted out his nutrition, because he's inactive and he's putting all of these excuses about his work at the front load, he's never going to be, his health is never going to be on point. And he doesn't need to lift weights to do that. He just needs to be active every week. Do I feel like meal prepping? Do I feel like cutting the broccoli? I mean, if you, if you want something... But your, the, your actions to get it are based on your temporary feelings 
and they get in the way of you doing the things you need to do to have what you want, then you don't really want it. I'll give you a good example. Let's say you're dating someone and um, they say, uh, you say, hey, like, can we have a monogamous relationship? Let's be exclusive just to each other. And they say, I want that. And then one day they're like, you see that or like they say, oh, yeah, I had sex with Stephanie. Um, and you're like, what the fuck? I thought we agreed to. Well, yeah, yeah, I thought you said you want a monogamous relationship. Yeah, I want it, but I felt like having sex with Stephanie. Like, what the fuck is that? No, you don't want a monogamous relationship. It's like you could be like, you know, if you do, oh, you could literally be the the best man in the world, right? You could literally have the best house, the best car. You could like do all the right checkbox things for the woman that you think that she wants. But if you're being, if your soul essence is not in the right state, there's nothing that you will do ever, even in, in a relationship or in your life that would keep that person. It's about your soul, it's about your being, it's about your being state, which is who you are, right? It's um your essence. Mm. This is something that's helped me grow my business massively. I don't believe in scarcity. I don't care about it. It's not a real thing to me. I don't need to waste time worrying about what could happen if there's so much more to it than that um i can create anything i want if i'm here if i'm present and when i'm right here right now i can see what would be helpful for people even if it's not something i offer and they, we, me and my dad have this podcast it's called the three g's three generations of entrepreneurship my grandfather my dad and me and um you know i was talking to my dad about how I want to invest in long-term relationships just like my grandfather did. And he was well known for this. He would do good things for people even if it wasn't going to come back to him like that immediately. This is where I see a lot of business owners going wrong, especially coaches. They're struggling because they have this idea of, well, I'm running a business. A lot of personal development is about adding stuff. Here's five ways you can be more aware of your anxious thoughts. Why do I want to be more aware of thought? It's separate to me. It just comes in and it goes. Leave it alone. There is nothing to be done. Everyone's going to have anxious thinking from time to time. There's nothing to do about it. Just leave it alone and it will go. But that's the thing. A lot of us are reacting to how we feel or how we think in the moment. And it's easy for me to say it. This is why I work with people. It's, I know I have a coach myself. It's easy for me to say, don't do anything with it. It's a whole different ball game to actually practice the art of letting go. All right, enjoy the rest of your week. I'll see you soon. Peace. And that's a wrap, ladies and gents. Fuck me. Only one take Jake out here on these motherfucking streets. <clears throat>